choosing which leaks to load, what to look for when reviewing your new squad and much more. I'm going to show you a step by step guide on how to get the best start for your new safe in FM24. Timestamps for every step are down below so let's get right into it. The one thing I'm gonna assume you've already done is deciding which club to manage. If you haven't, there's a video on the channel that can give you some of the best save ideas. For now, let's start with step number one. We first have to pick one of the newly added game modes. We've got Original, where all the real life transfers are already made and are immediately available for the classic Football Manager experience. We've got Realistic, where you start with the squad from the end of the last season, but all the real life transfers have been scheduled in to happen in game on the date that they happen in real life. And we've got Your World, where none of the real life transfers will happen in game. So it's all up to you. With choosing the game modes, it's up to your own personal preference, so there's no wrong or right. If you're unsure though, I'd advise you to go with the original game modes to get the old and reliable football manager experience. For step two, we're not gonna go for the quick start, but instead we'll click on advanced setup. In this screen, we're gonna set up which leagues are loaded into our game. We have the option to not load in a league or load in a league as few only or playable. But what do these options mean? Well, an unloaded league will have all its matches quick sims in the background. This means that you can view the league table, the results of the matches and the statistics of players playing in these matches. Furthermore, only a handful of players playing in this league will actually be loaded into the game with the game generating the rest of the players on the teams. Finally, this League will see less transfers coming in and out as well as having less injuries happen, which will have an impact on the development of the players. If you load in a league as view only, there's actually not that much difference with an unloaded league. The biggest difference for a view only league is the level of detail available, as you will be able to look at the league table, the scoreline for the matches played, as well as the statistics for the players playing in them. But the team still won't have all their players loaded in, as well as there only being slightly more transfers and injuries happening. So for the full experience, you'll have to load in the league as playable, as that will load in every player for every team as well as having the most realistic transfers and injuries happening. And I think it goes without saying that if you want to manage in a league, now or in the future, it has to be playable. A lot of people also worry that not loading in a league will mean that the game won't generate quality new youth prospects for that league. And that's not the case. The game generates new players based on the current total player count for a league. So while an unloaded league will generate less youth prospects, it doesn't mean that they won't have any at all. It usually means that the game only generates the best selection of youth prospects that would have been, so it's less of an issue than you might think. So deciding which leaks to load will depend on two factors. How much detail do you want and how much detail can your computer or console handle? Here's my minimum recommendation that any system should be able to handle. Load in the top 5 leaks of Europe as well as the top 2 leaks in South America as playable and set the rest of the top 20 leaks as few only. This should give you a detailed enough simulated world to give you the full football manager experience. And if you think your system can handle a bit more, I'd recommend also loading in the top 20 leaks as playable and loading in all the other leaks as few only to get the most detailed and balanced experience experience possible. Before we continue, there's two more settings that I want to highlight. I'd recommend never disabling the transfer window, even if you don't want to make any moves. If you do disable it, the game will also take away your wage budget. So if a player comes to you looking for a new contract, you won't have any money to negotiate with, so you risk losing that player. Finally, you can choose to disable player attribute masking, which means that you'll be able to look at the full report of a player's attributes without scouting them beforehand. Now this is up to your personal preference. If you don't want to bother with scouting, you can disable it. If you want a bit more of a challenge, you can and leave it as it is. All the other settings are best left untouched, which takes us to step number three. And it's the final step before entering the main screen of the game, creating your manager. I'll leave the visual side of your manager up to you. For now, let's focus on his badges and attributes. And I'll make this step quick. It's best to choose whatever the game suggests. The only situation where I would recommend something else is when you want an extra challenge in the form of a manager without any badges or past playing experience. If not, leave it as suggested. Which takes us to step number four. And the first time we get to the main screen of the game, there's a couple of things we have to do, but our first priority is getting an overview of our squad. But before we even look at our squad, we want to make sure that we're considering every player that might be of value for us and some of them might be hiding in our youth teams. So check your development center for any first team candidate that you might want to promote to the first team before evaluating your squad. Now that you've got your full team together, you can go through your players one by one and note down what they are and aren't good at. I like to evaluate my players based on six pillars of group's attributes. Speed, aerial, dribbling, passing, shooting and defending. Noting this down for every player gives you an idea of what your team is and isn't good at and gives you a basis to build your tactic on. But there's two other resources that can help you get a feeling for your squad, starting with your assistant report. By going to the squad planner and then under report clicking on assistant report, you'll get a detailed overview of what your assistant manager thinks are the strengths and weaknesses of your team, helping you get a clear idea of what your team is good at. And secondly, you'll also want to compare your team against the rest of the league. So under report, go to comparison. This show you for every part of your team how it stacks up against the rest of the league, completing your overview of your squad. 
taking us to step number 5, where we'll look at the dynamic screen. An often overlooked step when starting a new save, it's crucial to get an idea of the club cohesion and atmosphere when starting out, as it can shape how you want to approach your interactions with your players. If everyone's already relatively happy, you can push them a bit more from the start, but if dynamics are down, you might want to be a bit more cautious. You also want to take a look at the hierarchy of your team and see who the most influential players are, so you don't accidentally piss off the wrong player. Next up for step number 6, we'll look at the expectations that the board have set for us. This can give you guidelines on how you want to manage your transfers, tactics or squad management. My recommendation here is to apply everything that's required or desired, as that can influence you staying or getting fired. Anything that's of preferred or lower importance is up to your personal preference, as they won't really matter if you satisfy the other more important expectations, so you can take them or leave them. Taking us to step number 7, where we'll look at the finances of our club. You might have already planned a big transfer window, but it's important to check your club's financial status to see if they can support your dreams, or if you'll maybe even be forced to sell some of your players. And don't just check the current overall balance. Head on over to the projection screen to see how your club will fare in the upcoming seasons, to make sure that you're not sailing on a sinking ship. Now for step number 8, where we'll look at your staff and their responsibilities. My advice is to go through all of the responsibilities and decide which of them you want to manage yourself and which of them you want to delegate. And really don't be afraid to delegate here. There's a lot of things like setting up training or a scouting network that some players don't want to get bogged down in. You'll be fine delegating this and you won't hamper yourself massively. If you do want to manage your own backroom staff, now is the time to hire some new members. You can fill the vacant staff roles by going to staff search and then searching for people with the corresponding attributes. You can look to replace current staff members, but that comes at a financial cost. So my recommendation is to wait for their contracts to expire to then replace them. And with our staff handled, we're on to step number 9, creating our tactic. And since we laid the groundwork by looking at our squad's strengths and weaknesses, as well as possible expectations for a certain type of football, making a corresponding tactic should now be way easier. A great way to start is to pick one of the pre-made tactics that you think suit the strengths and weaknesses of your squad, and then tweak that tactic once you start playing games and seeing how it performs. But you can of course deep dive into making your very own tactic, and I've got a video on the channel that goes in-depth of making your own creation that'll work. For now, let's look at step number 10, planning your transfers. We know our financial situation, and once you've made your tactic, you'll probably notice if your team can deal with upgrading a position or two. So note this down for yourself, so we can start looking at players that can hopefully improve our team. Once you've got this down, head on over to scouting and click on players to start looking for players. By clicking on new search, we can look for any position with any filter or attribute selection that we want, so we can find our transfer targets. But be sure to ask for scout reports before you start bidding, so you won't go in blindly. Which leaves our last two steps, which are optional based on whether you're delegated them or not. For step number 11, we're going to be looking at our training setup. Setting up training sessions is complex enough to require its own video, so for now you're fine to leave it to your backroom staff. But let me know if you want to see that video. The one thing I would highly recommend you manage yourself is individual training. Specifically, you want to tell them to train in the role they'll be playing in your tactic, which can give them a massive boost in the development. And for our final step, we'll look at setting up our scouting network, as you want to be in position to find those wonder kids. Now again, this is something you can delegate, but your staff might not look in the more obscure nations. So here's what I like to do. When looking for wonder kids, I'm going to create a recruitment focus to look for any position in my tactic. I'll then set filters to look for players with a minimum potential ability of 3 stars, and who are aged between 15 and 18. I'll then select a specific region for them to scout in, set the priority to ongoing, and finally select a specific scout to do this recruitment focus. Repeat this process for every scout, sending each of them to a different region, and you have a wide scouting network that'll find you those wonder kids. And the last thing you can do to get the best start for your save is to check out this video where I go through all of the things that changed in this year's game that you might have missed. I'll see you on the next video.